Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the National Capital Planning Commission's February 2nd, 2012 meeting. Uh, would you all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for our all. Thank you. Uh, for all in attendance, uh, our meeting today here is being live streamed on uh, NCPC's website. Uh, and noting the presence of a quorum, I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, if there is no ob uh, objection, the open session agenda is adopted as the order of business. Uh, I should report that the chairman um, is not, will not be here today, and I, uh, Rob Miller, will be chairing the meeting uh, in his stead. Uh, ad agenda item number one is the report of the chairman. Uh, as you, you all may know, President Obama has appointed Beth White as a member of this commission. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, Ms. White with us today and the expertise that she will bring to this body. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number two is the report of the executive director, Mr. Acosta. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, welcome uh, to the commission, um, Ms. White. Uh, I only have two items to report to the, uh, that might have be of interest to the general public. Uh, first of all is our update of the comprehensive plan. Um, on January 24th, uh, we held two outreach events to support the work of creating the urban design element uh, for the comp plan. Uh, close to 100 uh, federal and local agency representatives as well as members of the general public attended two sessions that we held that day. Uh, we're in the process right now of compiling comments from the session and also in the process of uh, developing ideas for the new element. Uh, these ideas will be discussed with the Urban Design Task Force, uh, whose next meeting is targeted for late February. Also, uh, we have posted a new website to collect public, public feedback on the design of the federal spaces in the region as part of the uh, urban design element. Uh, visitors to our website uh, can suggest design values and issues that they, that they think should inform the design of federal buildings, campuses, and public spaces in the uh, national capital region. This will also help us uh, uh, with our public outreach and also help the commission staff develop new policies as it pertains to these spaces uh, as we develop the uh, comp plan. Uh, second, on January 30th, NCPC and GSA announced a request for qualifications to design a new temporary outdoor commemorative installation in Washington, D.C. Uh, the purpose of this design competition, called Beyond Granite, is to enhance a prominent but underutilized public space in the city's monumental core by fostering a public dialogue regarding the nature of commemoration in the nation's capital. And this installation will be at 12th Street at the Ariel, Ariel Rios Hemicycle, uh, 12th Street between Pennsylvania Avenue and Constitution Avenue in the Federal Triangle. So we invite artists and designers to uh, propose their ideas as part of this, and you'll also find uh, more information on our website at ncpc.gov. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Is there any, any questions from commission members? Okay, uh, agenda item number three is the legislative update. Ms. Schuyler. Uh, thank you, and welcome, Commissioner White. Um, two items to report today, sir. Uh, the first is um, regarding the Fat Frank Buckles World War I Memorial Act, which is a, a bill pending before the House. Um, on January 24th, well, that particular bill, by the way, um, among others, designates, designates the District of Columbia Memorial in Washington, D.C. as um, a national memorial, and there also would be proposed uh, to establish some additional commemorative works at that site. Uh, the Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Lands held a hearing on uh, January 24th, 2012, so it is beginning to pro progress its, its progress through the, through the legislature, through the Congress. The second item um, is, I think, a, a, a congratulatory to the agency. There has been pending before uh, Congress uh, for a number of years legislation to um, uh, penalize federal employees who do not pay their taxes. And the reason I'm raising this is because uh, a few years back, the statistics indicated that NCPC had a particularly high percentage. Uh, um, I suspect it is might be one of skewed statistics by virtue of this being a small agency. Nonetheless, statistics were released last week. The agency has zero this 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 term congratulations <laughs> <laughs> we need to, 
we all need those uh, tax dollars. One, uh, one comment, if we could. Sure. Uh, Mr. Buckles, uh, out outstanding American. Most folks are aware that he was one of the last survivors of World War One. We were fortunate to invite him to the Pentagon for some special recognition a few years ago before he died last spring at 107, 108. Tremendously inspirational story of, uh, of Mr. Buckles. Uh, highly worthy of uh, commemoration. Not only his, his accomplishments and achievements and contributions, but the entire generation that he represented. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda no item number four is the consent calendar. Uh, we have one item on the consent calendar, and it is the Japanese Lantern site enhancements on the title basin. Um, are there, are there any, Second. Quest any questions? Okay. Some discussion. Uh, all, the, all those what, in favor? Some discussion. Oh. Oh. What, one minor concern. Uh, I, I think the language is carefully couched. Uh, it has to do with, uh, I think the terminology you use is considering, consider using one material. The only cautionary note that we have is uh, clearly that the arrangements, the choice of materials, the pathways, the, and so forth, the selection of materials is integral to the design and should be respectful, if you will, of the concept of the creator. So if the language is only consider as opposed to substitute and restrict the use to one material for the pathway, we would have some concerns. But appreciate the, the flexible language that uh, is currently in the staff report about considering one material as opposed to requiring one material. Any uh, further discussion or staff comment? Uh, all in favor, say, signify by the sign of aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, agenda item number 5A is the master plan for the Intelligence Community Campus in Bethesda. Mr. Hinkle. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and Commissioners. Good afternoon. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, note within your packages that you received uh, today, um, there is some correspondence expressing support from both the Montgomery County Executive, um, Isaiah Leggett, as well as Congressman Chris Van Hollen's office. And in addition, we received this morning some verbal support from the project via telephone. Um, from the Montgomery County Council President Roger Berliner's office. So I just wanted to note those letters of, of support before I get started. Um, so the uh, Army Corps of Engineers is, is here today seeking final approval for the master plan for the Intelligence Community Campus in Bethesda. And, and this was reviewed by the Commission last December. Um, so this is a, a bit of a follow-on conversation. So within my presentation today, I'm really going to focus on um, some of the key issues and concerns, primarily related to the uh, parking garage, its size and location. So I won't get into a lot of the other details related to the, the master plan project itself. But um, just to give the commission uh, an idea of the, of the site um, and what's being proposed, it's really a complete redevelopment of the entire site um, for use by the intelligence uh, community. Uh, goals of the project are to create a modern and, and mission-capable facility, uh, to maximize the use of some existing federal space, uh, to meet anti-terrorism and force protection requirements within this facility, as well as to, to improve the site's uh, environmental impacts. And there is no change in the size of the site being proposed, so it's, the site's approximately 39 acres, and it's being designed for a maximum of 3,000 employees. Um, on the top, there's a photograph that, that shows the existing conditions. Um, the site's made up of primarily five main structures, in the Emory Hall, Erskine Hall, Aber Hall, Roberto Hall, and Mori Hall. A uh, significant amount of surface parking and then primarily a, a small landscape area, a historic oval out in front of Erskine Hall. And the below il illustration um, shows kind of a, a conceptual idea as to 
where this develop, redevelopment uh, would go. And just of note is, is the significant reduction in, in surface parking. Um, the idea is to place that in the proposed garage. The site's located just northwest of Washington, D.C., along the Potomac River. Um, you have the George Washington <coughs> Parkway running along the, the west side. Uh, within that, the CNO Canal, um, Clara Barton Parkway, and then you have MacArthur Boulevard running just uh, to the immediate west of the site. Um, the site is the former headquarters in the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Uh, the use that's being proposed is, is similar to, to its former use. Uh, the site's been a federal facility since 1945. Um, it was originally an expansion site for the uh, Army Map Service, which was established in 1942, uh, just south of the site we're looking at, at uh, De La Car Carlia Reservoir. Um, the site's significant for its leadership role in military mapping in World War II, as well as its subsequent role in, in um, mapping technologies since then. This is another aerial view of the site, um, just to talk a little bit about its, surrounding, um, its surroundings. What you have primarily are, are some single-family residentials. Let me orient you a little bit. This is north, south west and east and i have to apologize throughout this presentation the orientation of these these <laughs> graphics change so um, if you remember the national park property is to the west and mm -hmm. the site fronts on sangamore road which is to the east um, that should help you out a little bit but uh again there's it's primarily surrounded by single family homes both to the south and to the north and i'll point out uh, a neighborhood um, off of wapa Canetta road in this location um, there's a shopping center across the street from Singamore Road, a shopping and office complex, and then some multifamily housing uh, surrounding that. And again, the National Park Service property um, up to the north along the Potomac River. Uh, just a couple of shots to give you an idea of the, the current conditions of the site. Uh, this is, all three of these photos are from Singamore Road. This one um, is looking south towards some of the, the primary structures on the site. You can see the surface parking and then a portion of the existing gate um, with the primary site access in this location. Uh, this is a photograph looking north on Singamore Road. Again, the existing gate facility and the uh, primary access to the site, which, which currently forms a four-way intersection with Sentinel Road at, at Singamore. Uh, the bottom photo is a little bit further south on Singamore Road. Uh, you're looking at Erskine Hall through the trees, and this is the uh, green oval in front of that um, structure. And here's two photographs from the, the rear or the west side of the site um, on MacArthur Boulevard looking up towards it. You can see some, some of the structures, the trees, when the foliage is not in, in bloom. But uh, this essentially is the same um, location, uh, looking where we do have some foliage, and the site is uh, minimally uh, seen uh, through the trees at this point. So what the commission saw last December was a site plan um, that looked like this. And let me just run through what the, quickly what the proposal is. Um, there's a demolition of three structures, so Emory Hall, Abair Hall, as well as the existing gate facility, which you just saw in the photograph. Uh, modernization of the, the remaining structures in this location, as well as some new construction, uh, both here and in some new structure in, in this location. In addition, what's being proposed is a new visitor control center, a new gate or, or vehicle inspection station, as well as the, the garage. Um, What's represented here is, is an initial concept for the location of the garage uh, outlined in yellow and actually what the commission saw and what was what was presented last December was a revised um, location for the garage outlined in, in purple. And then at the time there was some discussion about relocating the, the access um, to the northeast corner of the site. Um, and just to let you know that is still um, a, a proposal to be done as a temporary access point during construction. Um, the site is, is 
currently being used. There's about 400 employees at the site, and it will continue to be used throughout the redevelopment. So the idea is to construct this during uh, the reconstruction of, of this phase to allow the employees to, to enter. Um, and then towards the, the end of the reconstruction, this access will be reconfigured and placed back to its original location. Um, at this review, it was the commission's um, action to, to defer um, any sort of motion on, on the master plan. And primarily, there were concerns about how this garage affects uh, the forested area and this location, as well as the, the views um, from the Potomac River and from the, Potom from the valley, um, as well as some stormwater issues related to the placement of the garage. So what the commission required was that the applicant evaluate alternatives to, to the size, the location, and the capacity of the parking garage, and to include a, um, the exclusion of the parking garage from the secured perimeter. So the applicants back with a with a response to those requests. Um, what they've done is actually reduce the on-site parking by 415 spaces. So that's from 2,240 to 1,825, and this allowed for a smaller garage size, um, smaller garage footprint. And then they also looked a little bit at modifying the garage siding, so they, they've pulled it as east as they can and just about as north as they can, and then modified some of the associated landscaping um, in this area. And they also studied alternative locations for the parking garage, and I'll, I will walk, walk you through those shortly. And then they confirmed with the Director of National Intelligence that there is a mission requirement to include parking within the site secure perimeter. And staff understands that, you know, the DOD's anti-terrorism and force protection, as well as the UFC requirements, um, really impact urban design and transportation and um, sustainability issues that are of concern of the commission. Um, but in this instant, you know, despite the applicant's confirmation that secure parking is a mission requirement, um, we feel that the primary issues related to the deforestation and views and, and traffic have been um, effectively minimized um, through this design. Um, but just in, in terms of the larger policy and related to the DOD's regulations and, and NCPC's policies, um, staff is currently working with the Office of the Deputy Undersecretary for Defense uh, for Installations and Environment uh, to schedule a commission briefing on um, the department's ongoing efforts to update some of the planning and design criteria. Um, related to overall installation master planning. So um, that is coming up, and, and we do understand the concerns there. Just to go back, so again, this is, this is what's currently proposed, um, but I wanted to point out that it's actually been no change to the, the remainder of the elements within the master plan. So it's a you know, modernization of the remainder of the buildings on, on site. Um, a new vehicle inspection station, a new visitor control center. And then importantly, I think for this plan, the removal of a significant amount of surface parking and, and making that space back into um, green space. Um, so that's what's in front of the commission today. Uh, just to explain how the applicant got to where they are today, um, they've spent a a tremendous amount over the last couple months um, coordinating with the community, coordinating with other stakeholders. Uh, they've held one public meeting at the Washington Waldorf School early in, in January, um, which is adjacent to the site in this location. At that time, they presented a, a scheme to reduce parking by 200 spaces. Um, following that, there were additional um, conversations with the community. The community came with a proposal within an MOU um, that uh, if the applicant could commit to some specific mitigation measures and reduce the parking by another 200 spaces that, that the community could be in support of this project. So that's kind of the steps that have gone on over the last two months. And the illustration kind of 
is intended to show the, the evolution of the garage design um, during that time. So what you have again is, is the initial um, concept design for the garage in green, uh, what the commission saw in purple, and what the commission saw in December is in purple. Um, what was proposed by the applicant to the community in, in um, early January is, is what's outlined in orange. So you can see the garage is, is reduced in size as well as pushed back um, as far east and as far north as they could get it. And then again with an additional reduction in 200 parking spaces, um, what you see in blue today is what's being proposed. Now to just run through the alternatives that they did look at in terms of siting the garage, um, they did three alternatives, the mid-site alternative, uh, the northeast alternative, and, and the northwest alternative, which is actually what's in front of you today. Um, just before I get into those alternatives, I just wanted to describe the site a little bit. There is a 30-foot drop um, in elevation from Sangamore Road down to the, the Palisades. And the intent um, on the applicant's part is to construct a six level garage, four above grade, two below, and to use the slope to allow portions of the two lower levels of the garage to be open. And this actually reduces their requirement for um, fire suppression as well as air ventilation systems. So the idea is to use a slope to, to design a six level garage with only four um, above grade. And the below photo just uh, is a shot from recent shot. Um, it's a little bit difficult to tell, but you can actually see the slope going down um, from Sangamore Road to the edge of the uh, lot. Oh, and just a, a last point. There, there is some bedrock, and bed, bedrock has become an issue. If you lower the garage even further, that will require some, some additional work and potentially some blasting to work through that bedrock. So that is another consideration. So the first alternative is the mid-side alternative. Um, that's placing the garage adjacent to, to the north edge of the site, but midway um, between the western edge and, and the eastern edge. And now certainly it increases the setback from the west side so that you preserve uh, the, the forested area and some of the specimen trees that are in this area. Um, but you begin to impact some of the, the views from the Singamore Road um, in the eastern side of the, the site. It's also um, a potential to, to begin to impact what currently is a tree buffer along the northern edge and you begin to have some difficulty in configuring the um, access roadway and getting the required uh, security in this area. Um, in addition, uh, the Visitor Control Center is pushed closer to Sangamore Road, which is something that uh, the neighborhood doesn't necessarily desire. And apart from what's currently being proposed, um, which is to move the security fence back along Sangamore <coughs> Road, you potentially will be pushing that back to its current location, which is essentially adjacent to the sidewalk. Uh, this is a second alternative, the northeast alternative. It's pushing the garage, of course, to the northeast corner. Um, this has some of the, the same benefits as well as um, some of the cons of the, that last alternative. One thing I forgot to mention as well in the last alternative, which this alternative also has, is with that elevation change, you're ac actually putting the top level of the garage higher than the location of the garage in this. And that further could impact the views from across the Potomac River because simply because the garage is higher, it's getting up above the trees and um, could potentially impact that view from, from across the river. Um, but again, you, you have the garage adjacent to Sangamore Road. Um, you're beginning to impact the view from, from this side as well as from the, the park and the, and the school. Um, you run into some difficulties in terms of configuring the roadway and um, what you would get is, is some potential conflicts between pedestrians coming out of the garage towards the buildings and, and the roadway itself. But again, you do preserve 
all the forested area on the west side and, and gain some additional open space. And then the third alternative is the northwest alternative and, and um, you know you, you resolve the issues of, of impacting the view along Singamore Road. You have some additional uh, room to, to work the roadways through. Uh, you're able to push back the visitor control center as well as the gate away from uh, Singamore Road. Uh, you're also allowed you know more room for landscaping in this area. But uh, again, you, you do impact uh, some of the forested area. However, because the garage is lower because of that, that slope down on the, on the site, um, you potentially have the opportunity to keep it somewhat below the tree line and, and less visible from across the river. So really, with, with that analysis, the Army Corps um, really determined that the Northwest location is the best overall location. However, they're looking at it with a smaller garage at this point. Um, so again, they, they've reduced the footprint by 20% by eliminating two parking bays um, as a result of the reduction in parking. Uh, they modified the garage siding. They pushed it as east and as north as they possibly could. And they modified the associated landscape design. And I'll get into more details in a second on that. Um, but they maintain most of the existing Palisades topography on the west side of the garage. Uh, they added a reverse slope berm and, and a screen of evergreen trees. And then they reduced the size of a temporary stormwater retention area at the southwest corner of the garage, which, which essentially eliminates the need to take down additional trees for that temporary facility. Uh, this is a uh, slide that shows the design progression of the garage um, from the concept level to today and, and in the middle is what the commission reviewed in December. Um, at the time of concept, it was thought to do clear all the way to the proper property line, so clear that floor space all the way around, which is really a, a about three acres of, of wooded area that would be impacted. In December, um, that area of, of impact has been pulled back, as you can see, as denoted by the green line here. And then what's being proposed today is even a further reduction of impact on that forested area with the garage um, to approximately less than one acre. Uh, this is a slide that staff put together. Um, what's shown in red is essentially the, the portion of landscaping, the, the wooded area, as well as the service road, and some additional landscaped area that would be impacted by the footprint of the garage as it's, as it's proposed. Um, from staff's analysis, we think this is approximately 0.2 acres. Um, this is showing roughly uh, the footprint of the proposed garage and how it would lay uh, within the, the existing parking lot and that, that portion of, of landscaped area. Um, and then further, what would be impacted is a, a portion of the forested area in this location that's um, for construction purposes, as well as the stormwater uh, retention area temporary, which would be in this location, um, as well as for placing the security fence and some other features. So to look at it in, in a different way, um, this is the, the plan of what's being proposed with the garage in this location. What's outlined in yellow is essentially where the outer um, edge of the existing pavement is. What's outlined in green is, is you know, a rough estimate of where the existing uh, forested area is in this location. Then we, we've laid the garage footprint, which is the, the red rectangle, um, as well as the security fence in this location, um, just so you can see that impact on what exists today. And then what's being proposed is, again, you have the, the garage footprint, the security fence brought into this location, and then you have a berm, so the garage, all six levels will be uh, viewable from, from this location, but the, then you have a, a flat area 
uh, clear zone uh, related to the security fence, and then a berm going up to the existing topography of the uh, palisades in this location, which then go down uh, both in this direction and this direction. And to clarify, um, this is a section um, down here. This is Wapakoneta Road at this location. And then, of course, the, the proposed garage in this location. So the section's taken here. Um, just to orient you, this is the existing grade of the, the existing parking lot. Um, the garage is proposed with all six levels in this location. You have a, a clear zone of 15 feet, the perimeter fence, and then you'll have this berm going up to the point to meet the existing topography um, of the Palisades, which is, which is retained in this location here. Um, you're standing on Wapakoneta Road. You'll be looking through the existing trees up to just a small portion of the garage uh, with, with a uh, proposed evergreen uh, screen in this location. So this is an illustration of what that view is. Uh, you have the existing topography, so this represents just about the, the point where the existing parking, garage, parking lot um, meets the Palisades. Um, behind it you have, of course, the garage and then the uh, proposed uh, evergreen screen of trees. Um, what's not shown in this is a proposed green screen along both the, the south and the uh, west. This is the west. Uh, facade of the garage. This is just another illustration. This is a garage uh, as viewed from MacArthur Boulevard. Um, again, what see the garage through the trees. Um, what's not shown here is the um, screen of evergreen trees as well as the proposed uh, green screens in the garage. This is that view I showed you before from across uh, Sangamore Road up on the northeast side of the site, um, looking down with that, with that slope down to the edge. Uh, with the placement of the garage, this is what you would see. Um, again, the garage in the back, you have a, the visitor control center and the gate more in the foreground, and then you have that temporary entrance gate um, that's being proposed. Again, this would be removed at, during uh, final construction, and, and the area would be re-landscaped. But of note, you can see how the garage relates to the existing structures, as well as the, the trees in the back are existing trees along that palisade, so they will help screen the garage from that west side and from the Potomac River Valley. Um, this is an old graphic, so the garage placement is, is not necessarily correct but the height that's being represented is. Um, so I wanted to show the relationship of what's being proposed in terms of the garage to the, some of the existing buildings. Uh, the garage is at the top parapet would be approximately 275 feet above sea level. And you could compare that to what's existing on Erskine Hall, which is at 341 feet above sea level. And so with that in consideration, um, you could take an image from, this is from Chain Bridge, and put in approximately where the garage would be. If you look, you could see the top of Erskine Hall just uh, peeking above the trees, and the garage would be significantly below that, and actually screened by those trees up front um, from this view. And this is just another view from across the river, um, trying to show the same concept. Again, you have Erskine Hall, um, in this location, and then the proposed garage in this location. In terms of stormwater management, um, you know, currently there, there are some stormwater issues with the site. Uh, following redevelopment, the overall site, site stormwater management will, will be significantly improved. Um, they will be in full compliance with the Federal Energy uh, Independence and Security Act, or ESA. Uh, they will be in full compliance with the Maryland Department of Environment regulations. Uh, there's a commitment to restore previously eroded areas on the site, and there is a commitment to continue to work with the Department of Defense, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the, the National Park Service and Congress, as well as other stakeholders to 
really facilitate the restoration of some previously eroded areas off the site, um, primarily on National Park Service land. And so I know we have a number of speakers and, and we have um, some representatives from the applicants themselves who uh, want to talk about stormwater issues. So I'm going to leave it up to them and, and let them focus on that. And I'll, I'll just continue the, the presentation here. Um, so just in summary, to, to pull it all together, again, we have the complete redevelopment of an existing federal facility uh, designed for a maximum of 300 employees. Uh, since the commission last saw it, there has been a reduction in proposed employee parking. So that's, you know, at, at the time when the commission saw this in December, it was uh, 200, 2,000 employee parking spaces, and now it's down to 1,560. Uh, and that gets us to an employee parking ratio of 1 to 1.92, which is uh, well within uh, the Commission's um, policies. Uh, the tree clearing on the site has been minimized to less than one acre, uh, and there's a commitment to preserve all the specimen trees within the wooded area. Um, and I, I'm speaking specifically of this area. Uh, there's a reconfigured site entrance. Uh, Again, they'll bring it back to this four-way stop here in accordance with the Montgomery County Department of Transportation. Um, and, you know, a, a most importance, I think, related to redevelopment of the site, there's a total reduction in impervious surface by approximately 50%. And again, that's represented to, by the, the green on this graphic, which is you know, the transformation of all this existing surface parking to, to green space. And just real quick, just to remind the Commission, this, this is being proposed um, to be constructed in two phases, uh, the, the North Campus site is, and then the South Campus site. The North Campus site includes the parking garage, vehicle inspection station, and, and the visitor control center, as well as the reconfigured access, temporary access in this location. And then the South Campus is the remainder of the site. So because of all this activity and, and essentially the plan you have in front of you now, um, you know, is, has really been come together about two weeks ago. There's, there's a lot of work to be done in terms of master planning documents, um, specifically the site development guide, which is the master plan uh, document needs to be updated to reflect this new plan. Uh, the traffic impact study and the transportation management plan need to be revised uh, to reflect the reduction in parking capacity and, and the reconfiguration of the site access. Um, the applicant has received a, a conditional um, stormwater management permit from the Department of Environment. Um, what they need to do is have this amended based on this additional um, change to the, to the master plan. Um, they have, through a letter um, to NCPC, they have shown that what was previously uh, uh, proposed does, is in compliance with ESA regulations, but that would need to be, um, a new analysis would need to be made and, and provided to, to us uh, to demonstrate compliance with ESA. And then they do have an approved uh, forest conservation plan based on, on the um, concept plan. Um, and that would, again, need to be revised. So what they're asking for from the Commission today is approval of the master plan to, to complete um, some of the analysis and the engineering that they need to do um, to get those numbers in terms of how much forest is actually impacted, what are the stormwater um, numbers, and, and how those could be how the stormwater facilities could be reconstructed to capture as much as they can on site based on this new plan. So that's the request today. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize up front. There's five slides of um, recommendations. However, um, they're, they're formatted in a way to, because we don't have those final documents complete, to actually describe what the master plan is and then describe those outstanding issues that, that need to be addressed. So with that, it's the executive director's recommendation to approve the master plan for the intelligence community campus in Bethesda 
And note that the final master plan includes a maximum site capacity of 3,000 employees. It includes a total on-site parking capacity of 1,825 spaces with a total number of employee parking spaces of 1,560. Um, it includes a parking garage that is approximately 248 feet in width and 385 feet in length and has a maximum capacity of 1,800 parking spaces. It does not include a provision for a helipad, which was a, an important point for the community. It includes reestablishment of the four-way stop sign controlled intersection at Singamore Road and Sentinel, Sentinel Drive as part of the phase two build out to the site. It minimizes the required tree clearing along the west side of the site to less than 0.75 acres and preserves all existing on-site specimen trees. It includes a landscape 10 to 15 foot reverse berm along the west side of the site and additional berms and vegetated buffers along the north and east sides of the site to help screen views of the garage and reduce the impacts of vehicle lights in the Potomac Palisades adjacent to the National Park Service property and surrounding residential neighborhoods. And it includes provisions to remediate on-site <coughs> stormwater runoff erosion and sedimentation damage caused during the previous occupancy of the site. Um, so the executive director's recommendation to also note that the, the, the commission will consider the staff recommendation and commission action as the intelligence community campus with as a master plan until the applicant submits an updated site development guide. And notes that any changes to the master plan, including but not limited to changes in the amount of on-site parking and proposals for additional building construction are required to be submitted to the commission for review. Um, it's staff's opinion that this plan actually is a, is a great model in how to reuse a federal facility. Um, so there's also a recommendation to commend the applicant for its plan to reuse and modernize an existing federally owned facility in a manner that acknowledges the facility's historic significance and significantly improves the environmental sustainability of the site. And because of all the, all the work that the applicant and the community has done um, to get us to this point, you know, it's really uh, our recommendation to commend the applicant and the community for their extensive coordination efforts since the Commission's December 2011 meeting to resolve issues related to site design, transportation and parking, visual impacts, deforestation, and stormwater management. Um, in addition, it's the executive director's recommendation to note that the applicant has committed to submit a landscape design, submit landscape design plans for each project phase to the, to the National Park Service to ensure compatibility with the adjacent uh, national park, to submit building and landscape design plans for each project phase to the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission for review of massing, articulation and materials of buildings, landscape design and screening, and to participate in a joint traffic committee, which was begun by the, by the community itself, um, with representatives from the community and the Montgomery County Department of Transportation to monitor, analyze, and evaluate traffic congestion and pedestrian safety related issues. And to note that the applicant is working with the US Congress, Department of the Army, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Montgomery County, and the National Park Service, and the community to address possible remediation of off-site stormwater runoff erosion and sedimentation damage caused by the previous occupancy of the site. And we're almost there. Um, and then finally, to uh, request that the applicant submit the following information along with its request for a commission review of phase one, the North Campus, and that's an updated site development guide, an amended traffic study and transportation management plan, uh, inform information demonstrating compliance with the Maryland Department of Environment's local stormwater requirements and the federal requirements under Section 438 of the Energy Independence and Security Act. And then a copy of the signed letter of commitment from the Defense Intelligence Agency to the committee, which we actually see, received this week and I, it should be within your package that you have on your desk. And then to encourage the applicant to continue its close coordination with NCPC and all other interested and affected stakeholders during design development of individual site and building plans and to maximize on-site stormwater retention and reuse to the extent technically feasible given the sensitive nature of the adjacent national park lands to the west. So that completes my presentation, Mr. Vice Chair. Th thank you, Mr. Hinkle, uh, for that thorough presentation, and uh, thank you and the Commission staff uh, 
along with the applicant and especially uh, the nearby residential communities for all the time and effort you've put in during the past two months since the uh, commission's deferral of this item in action item in December uh, to achieve significant design changes uh, to the parking garage plus other commitments uh, to mitigate the previous concerns of the community and the commission um, regarding traffic, views, stormwater, uh, and deforestation. Um, we're going to go as quickly as we can to the public uh, witnesses, but if the commissioners have uh, specific questions, clarifying questions or informational questions of Mr. Henkel, uh, I we could entertain those now. Mr. Argoni. Thank you. Oh, wait, Thank just one. I've been reminded by the staff to remind myself and other commissioners to pull your mobile devices away from the uh, microphones. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Henkel, could you just clarify for me, 3,000 is the maximum number of employees at the site. There'll be 1,800 parking spaces. How are most of the people going to be getting to the site? Or how are the, 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 the balance, there's, the 1,200? There's, sure. There's a commitment by the um, Defense Intelligence Agency, which is essentially the tenant, to really strive and, and push their TMP. Um, one aspect is, of that is they currently do have a shuttle running to um, the Friendship Heights metro station, I believe. And the idea is to further increase that service. And they're actually looking at ways to use that service um, in, in part or allow the, the community in part to use that service as well. But the one of the... Um, needs, I guess, that they need to do is actually modify the, the transportation management plan based on this reduction in parking. But, but the idea is to significantly increase, um, you know, in, in part that shuttle service that they have implemented. I noticed that there was a bus shelter identified on Sagamore Road. Do you know how, uh, how many people come by bus offhand? No, I, I don't have that. Okay, well, maybe when the, later on in the presentation. Thank you. Sure. Other commissioners? Just one question. As I recall in the presentation, there's a green screen on the west side of the parking garage on the uh, river side. Green screen on the east side, visible from the Sangamore? No, it, no. It, it's actually proposed to be on the west side and the south side. So that's the two south. primary sides. But not at this time on the east. Okay. Not at this right. time. Commissioner White. I have a follow up question on the traffic. And I, I was also intrigued with so much of the traffic management plan focused on incentives, which I thought were really positive and encouraging ride sharing and transit mm -hmm. incentives. So I'm curious going forward, do you know if they will set some benchmarks to, to answer the questions that um, Harriet was just asking about? whether they're having any impact? Because I think this could be a really good leadership model. Sure. And the fact that there's a joint traffic committee with the community, I think, is a really positive sign. But if they could report back on how it's working, perhaps, would be really helpful. Sure. The, the um, proposed MOA that the community put forward and, and the, the response back, the letter of commitment by the DIA, um, the agreement within that based on, the, was to reduce the parking by additional 200 uh, parking spaces with the understanding that when this site is fully operational, when, if there's a need through an evaluation for additional parking because some of those TMP measures are, are not working, um, then there could be an additional 200 spaces placed at grade somewhere on the site. Uh, that, again, would, would need a full vetting through the commission, a modification to the master plan, and, and you know, other um, reviews. But, but that was the agreement. So there is, there is a process to evaluate whether those TMP measures are working, and if in the future there, there is a need for additional parking on the site. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? If not, at, at this time, we will move to the uh, public participation part of the meeting. Uh, we have nine persons signed up to speak, uh, six representing organizations who will e each have five minutes to speak, and three representing themselves who have three minutes each to speak. There's a clock. Uh, please note on the wall that will count down your allotted time if you have not completed your comments. When the buzzer sounds, a uh, friendly buzzer, please quickly summarize the remainder of your comments. Uh, we will first call Mr. Laird Patterson, representing Sumner Square 
Con Condominium Association, please come forward. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Laird Patterson, representing the Sumner Square Condominium. We are the 34-unit townhouse development that sits directly across Sangamore Road from the existing parking lot and the proposed uh, temporary entrance. Um, the uh, John Harbison from the Sumner Village has, has an excellent statement, which you will be giving, uh, I, th I thought, before me. But essentially, in the interest of time, uh, our, our association uh, fully endorses the statement that Mr. Uh, Harbison will make, um, and, and it's in support of the, rec the uh, executive director's recommendations, uh, with the caveats therein. Uh, with one addendum, uh, I'd just like to note that from our perspective, the, uh, the the agreement to participate, the DIA's agreement to participate in an ongoing traffic committee, is vitally important, uh, and we that. That is a, uh, a key uh, ingredient in our uh, willingness to, uh, to endorse this recommendation. So with that, thank you. Thank you. We will next go to Mr. John Harbison, representing Sumner Village Community Association. Mr. Harbison, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice, Vice, Vice Chairman. I have a statement that I gave at the desk in multiple copies. Uh, my name is John Harbison. I'm a member of the governing board of the Sumner Village Community Association. I have been designated by the SVCA board as a representative to the deliberations of these communities affected by the redevelopment of the ICCB uh, plan. Sumner Village is located to the east of the shops at Sumner, which is across Sangamore from the ICCB site. We are a community of 395 condo units and approximately 650 residents. We are very appreciative of the responsiveness that the Defense Intelligence Agency and the Corps of Engineers uh, have demonstrated to the concerns of the communities affected by the planned development of the ICCB site. SVCA is prepared to support the ICC Life Master Plan as presented to the affected communities on December 10th and 12th, 2012 and as further amended by the incorporation in it of a letter of January 30th, 2012 to these communities uh, from Admiral James Mantleman, Executive Agent to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence on behalf of the DIA. Our support for the plan is, as amended by this letter from the DIA is conditioned on the following. Uh, unnumbered point, bullet point seven in the NCPC Executive Director's recommendations providing for, quote, additional berms and vegetative buffers along the north and east sides of the site, end quote, is incorporated in the Manzeman letter and the master plan consistent with the commitments made at the January 10th and 12th meetings with the community representatives. B, to the extent that creation of an additional 200 um, surface parking places is deemed to become necessary, those places are situated in such a way that one, backup on Sangamore does not occur Two, congestion is not exacerbated at the critical junctions of Claire Barton, Mass Avenue, and Sangamore, and Sangamore uh, and MacArthur. Three, loss of planned green space is minimized. And four, these additional spaces are located away from the east end of the site to the extent possible. And lastly, uh, continuing efforts are made to further reduce and minimize forest loss, particularly on the western and southern borders of the site so as to maintain the quality of the Putnam Valley, uh, Putnam River Valley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Harbison? Um, I had a question. Okay. Commissioner May. Um, I'm sorry, you, you referred to a bullet point in the letter or in the in, in NCPC the executive report? In the executive director's uh, letter. Uh, it's in the top of page three, actually, if you've got that. Okay. Oh, an additional berms. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other, any other questions from commissioners? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll next have Mr. Jesse Goodman come forward. Could I, could I ask a question since my brief comments build on those of the rest of the sure. community? Can we change order? Sure. Could, uh, I guess, Harry Full and then Steve 
Sour, go. Thank you. Well, no. um, so the, another, I, the um, we sort of tried to economize yes, the, the, on the, the, time. The, five, the last five witnesses had combined their testimony, um, and so that was going to be a total of. As long as you know that when you're switching, you're switching out yeah. with more than just the two. Uh, Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So we're now moving to um, um, Mr. Is it Mr. Donald O'Connor? Is it the, the list that starts with Mr. Donald O'Connor, Madam Secretary? That's correct. I'm yeah. O'Connor. Okay. I'm ceding my time to Mr. Fold, Mr. Okay. Sal. Okay. So let me just call the witnesses, and you will combine your allotment with whoever you want to testify. Just like uh, without objection. Mr. Donald O'Connell representing Sumner Citizens Association, Mr. St Stephen Salop representing Wapakoneta Committee of the Glen Echo Heights Civic Association. I hope I didn't do that to justice. Mr. Brad Northup representing himself, Mr. Howard Fall representing Glen Echo Heights Association, who I saw a lot of email trails from the last couple of months, and Mr. David Berg, Brookmont Civic League. Um, Please come forward in the way that you want to combine your 23 minutes total. <laughs> Great. Um, also, we have a PowerPoint presentation, and if uh, we could have a little help with that, uh, with uh, a pointer, that'd be super. Um, and that, thank you, Jeff. We just leave that up here. Okay. Thank you. I'm Harry Fole, and uh, president of the Glenico Heights Citizens Association. Our uh, association actually abuts the site on the west side. Um, we have about 484 homes, and uh, we're very appreciative of the opportunity to be present this afternoon in order to provide uh, supporting testimony to the approval of the master plan for the Intelligence Community Campus Bethesda. Um, the approval is provided on an interim basis and subject to certain conditions. Several of us from the affected communities have coordinated our testimony, as the chairman just pointed out. We represent the community associations for Glenical Heights, those who are testifying here in this group, Sumner, and Brookmont, um, several thousand residents when it's all combined. And we're a core group within the community leadership, which also includes additional six communities. The entire community leadership was fully supportive of the memorandum of understanding that uh, is Exhibit E, beginning on page 63 of the Commission Executive Director's recommendation. I'm going to do a very brief capsule recap of the history of our engagement and then turn the podium over to my colleagues. Salient features of the site include that, you know, no question it's admirably suited for the intelligence community's intended purpose for many reasons, and, and we applaud the reuse of the site and the economies realized by doing that. From the community point of view, the uh, principal considerations have been the following. The site abuts National Park Service lands, which uh, we treasure. The site is part of the Palisades and hence is protected by Montgomery County plans. The site overlooks and is part of the Potomac Gorge, which is a, a, a unique area on the East Coast ecologically. The site is steeply sloped and heavily wooded and uh, stormwater has a serious effect on it if it's uncontrolled. The capacity of the existing roads for additional heavy traffic is limited. Three key intersections are likely to be subject to considerable congestion. Project lighting may be intrusive to residents. Planning, <coughs> planning for the creation of the Intelligence Community Campus Bethesda began more than two years ago. Broad public engagement first occurred when the Corps presented its plans to a full house in the auditorium at the Waldorf School on October 5th, 2011. Uh, this resulted in a bit of an uproar, the gist of which included a series of objections to the plan and considerable discontent that community engagement in a, in a public manner had not previously occurred. Subsequently, the DIA's executive agent for the project, Admiral Jim Manselman, directly engaged the community leaders. And as a result, great progress has been accomplished on all fronts. We are very appreciative of uh, Jim Manselman's involvement. As my colleagues will note, we are supportive of the master plan with certain conditions which we believe are reasonable. They uh, pertain principally to deforestation and erosion and sedimentation. 
There are other issues, uh, for example, pertaining to berms and landscaping that per conversation with Admiral Mansman are easily resolved. We seek confirmation of assurances of performance and compliance uh, via the NCPC by inclusion of our conditions in the master plan and as conditions for NCPC's approval. Steve Salk will uh, now offer testimony. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm Steve Salop. Um, as I discussed in, in my written submission to you, uh, we're really heartened by the discussions we've had with, with the DIA and, and the Corps since December 1st. We're really grateful to the Commission for facilitating those discussions. Uh, at this point, we've not yet reached closure on all the issues. Uh, some gaps remain despite the commitment letter. There just wasn't enough time to finish uh, all the engineering in, in the time we had uh, in the run-up to this meeting. And so, as you know, you know there is no site master plan as of, as of this minute. Uh, the, the, the staff recommendation is serving as a proxy for the staff, for the staff master plan. So, but at the same time, uh, we want to be helpful and we don't want to cause delays to, uh, to, to the core. So what we're offering today is, is our support for the site master plan as, as incorporated in the uh, staff recommendation. But our support is just conditional and, and it's just interim. Um, I, um, it's conditional in, in the sense that we think you need certain conditions to close the gaps in the commitments that the DIA has made so far. Um, I, don't I don't think it's finished yet. And it's only interim in the sense that key, con key aspects of this uh, about re regarding the engineering remain unresolved and are only going to be resolved when we get to the phase one review. So the idea, our idea is that uh, we'll, we'll offer our support now. We'll revisit these issues in, um, in March or April when, when the Corps comes back. What we'd like to see are the conditions in the staff recommendation, and we'd like to see those conditions as conditions, as requirements, not simply encouragements to the, uh, to the core and the DIA. And then we have a set of additional conditions. They're on slide 10 in, in the PowerPoint you have. And I also had a handout uh, given to you so you'd have them on a standalone basis. Okay, to review quickly, there were, there were five, five concerns that, that the community had. We've really reached agreement on the last three, uh, and, and Mr. Hinkle talk, talked, about, talked about two of them. I'm going to focus my remarks on the two issues where there are still gaps, deforestation and uh, stormwater management. With respect to deforestation, the current status as of the day of this meeting is that there's continued uncertainty over the amount of deforestation. Uh, the with respect to the limits of disturbance and most importantly with the deforestation acreage. Uh, that's, there's a really large potential range of deforestation. This, the NCPC staff has estimated three quarters of an acre. Mr. Manselman is committed to one acre. Uh, the community would like and we think it's feasible to reach a point two acres and uh, Mr. Berg will talk about that. NPS, National Park Service, and the MNPPC would like really virtually no deforestation at all. So we view our, our two-tenths of an acre as, as a compromise. Um, most importantly, the, the high end of this, uh, three-quarters to one acre, is just completely unsatisfactory for this site abutting the national parks. Uh, the, NC, the, the National Park Service is strongly opposed to the forestation, as is the uh, MNCPPC. We believe that two-tenths of an acre, approximately two-tenths of an acre, should be able to be achieved with reasonable engineering efforts to move the garage further northward and to carefully do the engineering for the uh, stormwater management. Uh, what we would like, what we're asking you to do, is to set conditions uh, to require the uh, DIA and the Corps to reach, uh, or really try to reach, uh, two-tenths of an acre. Um, the DIA is committed to minimal deforestation, but we note that the Corps at the last meeting here said that three acres was minimal. So we don't really see that we can rely simply on that type of generalized performance standard. With respect to stormwater management, uh, there are serious, um, serious, serious environmental concerns. It's, it's a steep slope, so there's no space for the water to uh, for the, for the water to be absorbed, so it'll quickly flow into the CNO Canal and the river. There's a history of erosion uh, on the site, sedimentation in the canal, that the National Park Service spoke uh, 
really um, quite admirably about it at the public meeting that we had at, at the ICC uh, in December. Uh, I think there, it's, it's an understatement to say that the National Park Service has significant concerns. Uh, current status, um, right now the commitment letter says that they will satisfy state and federal regulations. Uh, we think that's too low a bar. We think a higher bar, something like a 25 year storm is necessary and essential for a unique site like this one. And we're asking you to set those conditions uh, in order to guide the phase one review. Uh, remaining issues, a remediation of historical erosion sedimentation. Uh, there are no conflicts at this point. Uh, we're in agreement with the Corps and the DIA. We're all working together on this. We do request that the Commission throw its weight behind getting funds allocated to, getting BRAC funds allocated for uh, off-site remediation. So we, we hope that you can get involved to help us on, on that issue. Uh, traffic congestion, Mr. Hinkle's talked about it. We, we came up with an interesting compromise that they can build 1,825 spaces now, and if they need 200 additional parking spaces, if they can show through objective evidence without causing undue traffic congestion, then we were committed to uh, not fight their need to add 200 surface spaces. The Joint Traffic Committee will, will work on that, will monitor that. Uh, yes, we're gonna look at incentives. I'm an economist, I'm a great believer in using incentives to help help move people to carpools and, uh, and van pools. Uh, at this point, I see no conflicts with respect to the traffic issues, but you know, we're, we're following, we're a watchful waiting with respect to the traffic congestion issues. Uh, lighting pollution, uh, community's been, been worried about that. Uh, the DIA has made various commitments to deal with lighting pollution, so there are no, no conflicts uh, at this point beyond, once, if those commitments are, are followed through with. Um, so in summary, what we would like you to do is attach conditions to your approval of the master plan given the state of things that there is no master plan and that many important engineering issues have not yet been worked out, the sort that would be worked out in a normal master plan procedure. So we would like you to uh, amend your approval, the conditions listed in the staff uh, recommendation, including, as I said, uh, rather than simply encouraging the DIA and the court to do certain things. We'd like you to uh, require them uh, to do those things. We'd also like some additional conditions that we think are necessary. Uh, we'd like uh, you to ask them to set a goal, a deforestation goal, down to approximately uh, two, ten two tenths of an acre, not three quarters of an acre, not one full acre. Uh, we'd like them to require reduce deforestation to the maximum extent feasible but where that maximum extent feasible takes into account the fact that this is a very sensitive location abutting two national parks. If they can't, we, we believe it is feasible to reach that goal of two-tenths of an acre. In fact, Mr. Hinkle's drawing was a lot less than three-quarters, I believe. And, but if they can't reach the goal, we think the burden should be on them to show everyone the engineering drawings so that they can be subject to a review you know, if, if they're gonna go for a lesser goal than two-tenths of an acre. Similar conditions with respect to stormwater. Uh, we'd like them to design stormwater facilities with the goal of treating 100% for 25-year storm, not just the 10-year storm that's required uh, under the regulations. Uh, we would like you to mandate that, uh, mandate that goal. If they can't, if they say in the end that they can't reach that goal, and we're not sure they can, you know, if they, they've reduced the garage by 25% from their initial proposal, that should reduce construction costs by about 25%. So they've got several million dollars to play with to uh, prevent, to spend on engineering and stormwater facilities so they don't need to cut down any more trees than are absolutely necessary. So again, what we'd like to give them an incentive to, uh, to, to reach that goal, if they can't reach that goal, if that's what they conclude, they should be required to submit detailed engineering justification for what they're doing so it can be reviewed by the community and the National Park Service and the NCPC. Um, I well understand that these are uh, unusual conditions uh, that we're asking the commission to, to mandate. It's not what you, I under, my understanding is it's not what you normally do. Uh, but I think that it's justifiable for you to mandate these special conditions because this is really a unique site. 
of protected palisades abutting two national parks. Thank you very much. I will now turn it over to Mr. Berg, who will talk in more detail about the deforestation and the, uh, and, and the stormwater. This is Good. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Berg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak, and uh, I appreciate the help of the staff in getting ready. Again, I'm going to focus on what is adequate about defore what would be ad an adequate amount of deforestation and what would be adequate in terms of stormwater treatment. Um, we clearly support the National Park Service and Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission uh, in, in the goals, and we're trying to find compromise commitments that will work. Uh, the new plan is clearly much better. It's not there yet. Um, a sound site master plan has to set concrete limits that assure adequate protection, not just general standards. That's the only way to ensure adequate protection in this case. Um, Steve talked about the word minimize. That's a critical word. Um, three acres was minimized before it should be two tenths of an acre, not an acre or three quarters of an acre. And um, we encourage you please to limit forest losses, uh, additional forest losses to approximately two tenths of an acre. Um, regarding stormwater, I'm going to, I'll come back to stormwater. So on forest protection, um, this first slide shows um, this site as it exists today. The red trapezoid is approximately two tenths of an acre. This is uh, uh, figure 15 in the staff recommendation. The, this western platform, basically everything south uh, or west rather, below the yellow line was built in the 1980s on top of the Palisades. This, um, This is a platform at here, at this point, it's about 25 or 30 feet high. They've already cut down about three acres of the Palisades. What we're talking about now is the residual. Davy Hearn showed you that this area is now one tree thick in the picture he took from the Potomac River. So um, what will happen if you remove this area right here and these trees here will be devastating, and I'll show you that in the slides to come. This picture is the area in the trapezoid. So this little area, whoops, this little area right here is these trees. Those 11 large trees are the canopy in the Palisades. And they would go even in our compromise proposal because they need it for the footprint of the garage. This is now back towards Maury Hall. Every tree in this picture will go. This is the Palisades, what, what is left on the south side of the garage. These trees all go in the current plan. Uh, and I'll come back to this slide in just a moment. So the trade-off, uh, I'll show you the trade-off in a minute. So the next slide um, here shows um, they're out of order. This slide shows uh, is exhibit is one of the exhibits from the uh, from the document, the staff report, and it shows where the garage will be and how it will be hidden by the trees. The problem is all the trees that hide the garage will be gone, and so the canopy above the garage will no longer be there in if three quarters of an acre to an acre of trees are cut. Okay, I, I, that's just the facts of it. I'll show you from another direction in a moment. Um, this is looking up the hill towards the uh, driveway and parking lot. You can see that the Palisades are steep there. Almost all the trees in this picture will be cut down, and that's just in one area in the middle of the south side of the parking lot. Um, this is the view from MacArthur Boulevard. Actually, a third to a half of the trees um, will be gone. This is a Photoshop picture, of course. The garage is, no, is not there yet. And actually, a lot of the trees in that picture will be gone. You will see the garage clearly from MacArthur Boulevard for six months of the year. Um, OK. 
If, however, you adopt our two-tenths of an acre limitation, virtually none of the remaining Palisades forest needs to be cut on the site, and I'll show you why. The two-tenths of an acre standard is achievable, and you please should require them to achieve it. With a garage length of 381 feet, it fits entirely within the 400-foot existing uh, area on, the, on, this, on this west side parking lot. So where the yellow arrow is, is about 400 feet. The garage would fit there. They don't have to cut down the area to the right. This picture shows um, the garage photoshopped in. Whoops, excuse me. These trees will be gone, completely gone, due to the construction of the garage. They didn't Photoshop those out of the picture, but that is the, that is the Palisades at the southern end of the garage, and those trees will be gone. These trees are the one or two tree thick residual of the Palisades left on the western edge of the garage. So, to, to accomplish the, the move of the garage farther to the north, which will move the garage out of the Palisades, this entrance needs to be eliminated and moved over to here. This security uh, final denial barrier can stay right there. The entrance would be here. This would be a four to five degree slope, which is within uh, spec for um, garage ramps on which parking occurs. So it's a relatively shallow thing. In addition, a stormwater management facility would have to be moved to the north, which is possible because the top level of the garage will be 30 feet above the grade. So there's no problem routing the water to the north instead of having the stormwater management facility in this location. Those two key things and maintaining the, the final denial barrier are all that has to happen in order to save the forest over here. So when I showed you the Palisades in, in this picture, there were uh, 11 large trees that form all the remaining Palisades in that area. Um, this entire area will be cut. This illustration shows only the impact of the garage and not an additional area of cutting that will happen here uh, for the stormwater management facility. This is where the stormwater management facility will go, um, although these, this tree and this tree are not apparently specimen trees, they're very close to being that large. Again, these four trees are the palisades in this area. These two are at risk and those two will be cut down for the current location of the stormwater management <coughs> facility. Whoops, excuse me. So again, um, by moving the entrance to here, eliminating the, this entrance and this entrance, originally in the previous version of this, there was only one entrance on the north side. They're now showing two or three means of ingress and egress. By moving them onto this side and separating them, you have plenty of room to move the garage to the north and out of the forest and avoiding the deforestation, which actually will go into here and here. That's the only way you get to uh, three quarters of an acre to an acre. Um, okay, I, I should stop, uh, and perhaps you have questions. This shows the result of what happens when you don't manage stormwater. This is from the Northwest uh, outfall, which will be maintained, and um, this little, this little, excuse me, area at the bottom where water passes was hand dug by the Park Service staff uh, so that water could flow to recharge the canal below that point. And this shows the impairment, which is the Park Service's word uh, for serious damage um, on the slopes. This is a tree root that spans this. There are a whole bunch of them along there. Here you can see the Park Service staff. That gives you a sense of the scale of the erosion. 
and there, uh, there was no uh, natural channel in that area. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Berg. Members. The, uh, we have additional witnesses, but does the, does the commission, any commissioners have any questions for the last three speakers that were part of this uh, combined presentation? Just one quick one about the uh, tree size. On the figure three and four and five showing the trees that are being removed, are any of those specimen trees? I thought I heard you say a couple were close to, but are any of them the 30 inch or, or larger? Um, the, the Corps has, in, has told us that no specimen None. trees will be cut. Right. As far as we know, that is the case. Right. Um, what I was trying to convey is that the, these large trees are in the 12 to 30 inch category right. that fall below specimen and they are the palisades. The right. specimen trees are farther down the slope mm -hmm. and they don't comprise the visual shield and the tree line on the palisades. Right. So the answer I, would, I take it is no, no spe as per their commitment, they follow through on that. And, right. and would you acknowledge that these trees are going to be at least partially replaced, restored with the trees along the berm plus the green screen along the Right. So the berm, this the reverse, the reverse berm goes reverse down. Berm. So the trees will be 10 or 12 feet tall. The current trees are 100 to 125 feet tall. So it's basically a permanent uh, degradation of the site. But just let me add, a, a 30 inch, a 30 inch diameter tree has a circumference of seven and a half, seven and a half feet. That is one very big tree. A tree that has a, a, circu a diameter merely of 24 inches or even 18 inches could be a tree that's 75 feet tall and, or, or 100. So I, I, I think the specimen is obviously an arbitrary characterization. And if you're asking about deforestation and visual impact, it is a very big tree. Much smaller trees have very important visual impact. Thank you. Any other commissioner questions for this last panel? Then we will move to Mr. Jesse Goodman. Are you prepared to speak now? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. I would just, you know, add right there that at one of our meetings, um, which I really did appreciate with uh, the DIA and the Corps, actually the head of the local, of the CNO Canal Park stated that he considered a tree of more than six inches in size, a tree of significance. So this, you know, the for those of us who are looking at the forest there, the fact that there's mature forests with trees of over 100 years old, those are quite significant trees. <clears throat> Anyhow, I'm Jesse Goodman. I live at 6655 MacArthur Boulevard. I'm also co-chair of the uh, Wapakoneta Committee with Steve. And... Uh, I'm one of the project's nearest neighbors. I testified here before, and all along I've really been concerned that as this project moves forward, it be done in an environmentally responsible manner uh, and in one that uh, really um, respects our very unique community. Uh, so I really am here to uh, support uh, the comments of my colleagues and uh, uh, that they've made and the um, appreciation also I do want to echo for the constructive dialogue with the Corps and, and the DIA, and particularly uh, Mr. Manselman's uh, uh, help there. Uh, I do want to also confirm that I share the conviction that while things are headed very well in the right direction, there are some improvements which can and should be made and support the additional conditions which uh, Mr. Salop asked be uh, considered for addition by the NCCPC to the plan. Uh, it's hard to react when you can't see the details, what trees are being lost where, uh, and we think these are, these are very important. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, as I previously testified also, uh, I really want to emphasize the importance in doing everything we can in protecting this very precious area. This is, I, I was really struck by, in the staff presentation, there was an aerial view, and you could see this lovely canopy of forest extending along the river and up on the Palisades and how this particular site is a key part of that and you know that really is very special for an urban area and needs to be preserved. Uh, that's why the Park Service has been concerned. That's, that's why we're concerned. Um, 
We've seen many times in our community, not just with the government, but with the private sector, that people come in and say, we have to take these trees out. Something is part of construction, but then if you really push, the construction can be done in a way not to disturb the trees, and that's what we're asking. So we really, again, ask that any tree loss be kept to an absolute minimum and that this be a clear commitment. So we look forward to working with DIA and the Army Corps of Engineers going forward. Again, I support the con a conditional and interim nature of approval here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, 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 that, that really is just my remarks in support of the rest of the community. And also, I just want to express appreciation for your careful consideration of our input and for your actions before uh, in trying to protect the very special environment and the communities surrounding it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. Any questions from the commissioners for Mr. Goodman? If not, we'll go to, I believe, is the last witness, uh, Mr. Harry Lewis. Is he here? No. So then we will bring it back to the commission for its deliberation. Um, let me ask uh, this, Mr. Acosta or Mr. Hinkle, if you could just address the uh, community's request for additional conditions uh, to be part of this uh, motion, if you could just respond to that request. <clears throat> Let me take a crack at it. Um, I think uh, the first one, which deals with the um, production of deforestation to approximately 0 0.20 acres, I think is, um, is, a, is a request I think that we would support because I think to the extent that we want to see, you know, Zero deforestation is a, is a key thing. I think the one thing that you do need to be aware of is that uh, you are going to be reviewing this as a project in a couple of months. And so I think the, the key point here about um, submitting detailed engineering analysis to NCPC as part of that in order to understand whether it is feasible or not, I think is critical. We could request the applicant to submit this as a proposal. Uh, or as, a, as part of their application, and they could work it through because they still have some, a significant amount of uh, engineering work to be done, and at this point, they are unable to, to tell us whether they can make that or not. I think they've come a long way uh, since the original proposal, uh, but I think whether it's practical or not, I think uh, we still needs to be determined, and I think they need to do that work in order to do that. So you might want to set it as a target uh, for them, and, and, and that's something you could review um, the project as it comes in against uh, when, when it comes in for a for approval uh, in, in future months. So that's one option for you um, to consider. It's a target. It's not necessarily, at this point, it's a master plan that you're approving, so you're not necessarily stipulating uh, or approving a final design. But it is something that you want to work towards, and I think that's something worthy of considering. Um, in terms of the second issue, and I think we also have representatives from the core here who speak about the stormwater issues and the permits. Um, we typically follow federal laws that are in place as well as use state laws as proxies in terms of um, the regulations that we use with respect to stormwater uh, management. I think um, that's essentially what this is, what the Corps has pursued uh, to date. I think uh, we don't typically impose higher standards unless we have a significant finding or we've determined that uh, to be a, a, a different standard in our comp plan, for instance. Um, where, for instance, we have special parking ratios that we apply uh, to various projects. So typically in cases like this, we do follow established federal laws or in this case, uh, state of Maryland uh, laws to guide or regulations to guide uh, our review. So if the commission wants to impose higher standards, it can consider that. But I think the practice has been uh, to follow state and federal laws or regulations. Uh, those are the two uh, additional conditions primarily that uh, yeah, I think that's what, that's what the community had asked for. Okay. Um, so I would open up to the commissioners for a motion or a discussion. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I just have one further question and maybe the staff can address it. What are the opportunities for further dialogue with the applicant and the community as the engineering proceeds? I'm assuming there will be continued interaction as they yeah, there's since December, there's been a tremendous effort on both sides to um, maintain a dialogue. And we certainly see that continuing. And, and I think one of our recommendations is for that to continue. Um, 
we've also made a commitment, or, or the, the applicant has made a commitment to submit their phase one drawings to the county as well, and so there's an opportunity to work with the community during that review process um, as well. So I, I do see that, that conversation continuing throughout the, the process. Commissioner um, Yes, I'm not quite prepared to make a motion, but when it comes time, I'm, uh, I may be able to do that or suggest some uh, modification, I think, to address some of the neighbors' concerns. Um, the, uh, first of all, let me say that the, the outreach that has occurred um, most recently on this project and the progress that, it, that has been made uh, I think is uh, really exceptional and is a testament to the um, good efforts of, of the core and everyone involved on, on the part of the project and of course on the part of the neighbors um, who I know have been working very hard on this. I think we all received multiple emails on the topic. It's pretty apparent that this has been a sustained effort um, and it's, uh, it has involved numerous meetings, some at clearly inopportune times. I mean, the idea of having a meeting uh, just a couple of days before Christmas on an evening is uh, just um, pretty exceptional. And, uh, um, but I, and I appreciate the fact that not only did the core arrange that meeting, but that the neighbors were able to participate because it's not a good time for anybody and it's a, it's a real struggle. So uh, I think it really was an exceptional effort and it, ex um, it demonstrates not only the concern of the neighbors, about the resources, but also about their commitment to complete the project and and be attentive to the to the uh, uh, the needs of uh, uh, the agency and and uh, and the Corps of Engineers. So um, that having been said, I, I think the result of this is is a is certainly a significant improvement over what we had seen before. Um, we are uh, we enthusiastically support all efforts to repair some of the stormwater damage that has been done over the years by the prior con uh, uh, facilities and um, we are willing to participate that in that uh, to the greatest extent possible uh, i think our support may be limited to moral support um, because we have a number of circumstances like this that we try to address along the length of the the uh, of the canal and on both sides of the river so um, uh, it may be, uh, it, I think we're looking for the, uh, the core to take the lead in, in uh, finding the funding necessary to, to uh, make these repairs, uh, and we uh, strongly encourage that. Um, I believe that some of the other issues have associated with the, the views, uh, the nighttime views and lighting and so on, the green screen, I think all of those are, are, uh, are coming together and we're heading in the right direction. And I think that the proof will be in the, what we see in a couple of months when we see the, um, um, the final plans for the garage building and hopefully that'll include some, some sense of what the lighting scheme will be. So we, we, we understand, appreciate that too. Um, I also uh, specifically wanna mention uh, you know, that we appreciate um, the opportunity to review uh, planting plans for the site uh, it is important to us what happens in the immediate vicinity uh, for um, not just the nature of what's planted, but also how how it's planted and how it fits with the, the, the context and, and how it can help us achieve the, the goals for the, the park uh, adjacent there. Uh, toward that end, um, if, if it's helpful, we can certainly provide a plant list um, to the core that would be uh, helpful in, in determining what is appropriate to plant in that area. Um, and then, uh, I guess in conclusion, uh, I would uh, support uh, adding some version of the conditions that were proposed by the community um, to the EDR. Uh, certainly in terms of the deforestation, we've seen enough to, to indicate that uh, it is within striking distance to reduce the deforestation to 0.2 acres, um, and maybe even better than that. Um, and I think that uh, you know, uh, uh, the point was made that, that while the trees that uh, would be lost may not be specimen trees, they are truly significant trees um, with uh, uh, great height and great growth. And um, replacing them with a bunch of uh, uh, five inch caliber uh, trees isn't gonna do that much uh, for the, the, uh, the concerns that we have, at least not for the next uh, 50 or 70 years. The, um, 
with regard to stormwater management, um, I understand the, uh, the, the federal objectives and certainly me meeting uh, uh, EISA 438 is a critical objective. Um, we've looked at it from that perspective and we don't understand how this project, based on the information that we have, actually can meet uh, ESA 438. Um, and it is incumbent upon the court to demonstrate that that's correct. Um, and that, I, as it says in the, in the uh, recommendation, we would expect to see that when we see the final garage uh, plans. But I think the important thing to understand here is that one of the issues that we've talked about is repairing damage that was done by the previous facility. And I think that any circumstance that we would allow to occur here that would allow future damage of the same sort should not be permitted, regardless of whether it's designed to a federal standard or a local standard or whatever. I don't know exactly how we phrase that or determine it. I think that the, the neighbor's suggestion that it be based on a 25-year storm and 100% of the stormwater is certainly a, a, a reasonable achievement, but I think that you know the idea of being certain that there is no stormwater damage resulting uh, from the future use of this site, I think, should be the objective. Thank you. Uh, further uh, discussion or a motion from commissioners? Yes, Mr. Greenwell. I just have a quick question. I apologize that I was unable to make the December meeting, and if this was thoroughly discussed there, I apologize. But um, the alternatives that are presented on page 19 of the EDR that show the parking garage, not near the heavily forested area, but in a different space running along a road that I don't see labeled, but um, the north side. The cons weren't entirely clear to me as to why those two options aren't being pursued, which would clearly keep any area from being de deforested. Um, and there was talk about views, but there seemed to be complaints about views in other areas. So I didn't know if they were coming from a different group. If you can explain that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of the issues with with the two alternatives on page 19. Um, the, the slope of the site um, requires that these garages would be approximately 30 feet taller than what's currently being proposed. So in terms of views, that could um, negatively impact this view as, as discussed from the Potomac and the Potomac Valley, because simply because that garage would sit higher on the site. Um, and it's also some potential impact to what's currently a, a screen of trees along the north edge of the site, simply because you're putting those garages along that edge um, with some additional infrastructure. Uh, there's a, the potential that you would lose that line of trees that runs along the north um, property line. Um, and then again, the, the, the views from Sangamore Road, you know, you, you do have a trade-off. Um, improving the views on one side or, or improving the views on the other. You have um, proponents and opponents to, to each one. Um, so you need to look at the balance. And then putting the garages closer to Sangamore Road, that also limits some of the uh, ability to, to queue your vehicles to where you place the gate, um, some of the other elements in the, in the design that are compromised in terms of where these garages are placed. Okay, can you tell me about, uh, um, again, because of these photos on page 19, I'm, my orientation is a little sure. bit off. What views, whose views are we discussing that this would impact? Sure, it, uh, the orientation on, on these graphics, north is at the top of the page. Okay. Um, then you're looking east to, to the right of the page. There you have some single family homes, some town homes across the street. Okay. Um, that would be affected by placing the garage closer. On the north side, you have a, a private school, um, K through 12, as well as um, a local uh, park. And so there has been concern expressed by the county planning board in terms of the views from that park and how that garage affects that view. Um, and then there's been some discussion with the community, uh, the, the people living off of Sangamore Road and, and in terms of how that view is affected once you get the garage closer to Sangamore Road. Okay, thanks. 
further Commissioner Trigoni. Sorry. Um, I'll, I, I raised this earlier and I'll just sort of say it again. I, I do think that uh, it's been impressive how much dialogue has occurred since the last meeting and I know that people are very appreciative of how willing everyone was to come to the table to try to get a, a good resolution. But I, I will say that I found particularly unsatisfactory the response about why the parking needed to be inside the secure perimeter, that it was part of the requirement that it be inside the secure perimeter, which is, you know, a, a circular argument, right? I never heard wh why it's in the interest of the government that, the, that we secure the cars, and not even all the cars, but only the cars for the 1,800 people who will be able to park there not for the 1,200 people, some of which will be driving and just parking elsewhere. So it seems to me that we are trying to fix the problem at the end of a long set of decisions um, that, that cause us to double the security perimeter, double or triple the queuing area, build a resource that can't be used by anyone else but the federal government during the mo and mostly during a 9 to 5 office hour. You know. I don't understand why that, that it makes sense to do that. So, you know, I, I do, I will say to my fellow commissioners that this is actually an issue we might want to try to address, not project by project, but more systemically. It just doesn't make sense to do this. And we wouldn't have this issue of deforestation and the surface water impact and the imperviousness if we hadn't made the earlier decisions that for some reason it's in the public interest to protect people's automobiles. You know, we are already standing off the, the, the garage because of security threats, presumably, from the, the building where people are going to be working, but now we also need to secure the garage itself. I, I don't understand it. All right, but that being said, we're going to invest a lot of money in this garage. All right, but there are 1,800 people coming by car. There are 1,200 people coming by some other means, and I'm not really satisfied with what I'm seeing about their facilities, you know, whether it's by bicycle, whether it's by by uh, by bus, that what, what I see as a meager little shelter, I think could be a station, could be a bus station, um, something much more accommodating for people to encourage them to take the bus. And in fact, there's all that nice retail right across the street. I mean, it might be something that would serve both purposes. Um, so I know we're still waiting to get a, a, a revised uh, um, transportation management plan. Um, at, you know the 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 failure of which will will be potentially 200 more spaces, which I'm not excited about. But I really would like to look at uh, at, at the efforts, maybe in, again in conjunction with the county, to try to really accommodate a multitude of of, of choices for how people might get there. Um, if you don't have to have a car uh, to get to work, maybe in your household you could end up having two cars instead of three cars, or one car instead of two cars, and that would be a a great benefit. Um, I'm not seeing anything in this project that would help a, a family employed here to be able to make those better choices, but I, I know that uh, we have time before we get the, the first project to actually approve to, to be able to see some progress on that front. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, Could we call the, uh, the, the core to address some of these issues? Sure. They have not had an opportunity to yeah. speak. Uh, so, um, Representative of the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers. Admiral Manselman. Can I ask a specific question? Yes. No, yes, um, please. Um, I, I, um, I agree with everything Harriet just said, um, but I'm not going to grind that ax here again either. I mean, I, I, I agree. Let's take it up because we're certainly doing it other places and answering the question it sounded like why because the uh, the guy in charge of the of the um, facility says so and that's I find that unsatisfactory also um, however uh, uh, it seems to come down to um, and and I would go through all this congratulation for the great dialogue but frankly I think it should have taken place in the first place so um, I'm just not that nice, I guess. Um, so it all comes down to. Luke, Luke um, just seconded. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Um, I, it all comes down to whether or not uh, this 0.2 acre um, 
of of trees can be um, is this in the Corps' opinion is this feasible and that's number one um, or or is it not in your opinion can the program for the garage um, be reconciled with this requirement um, or condition and um, if it can't why not and um, <laughs> I don't think I understand this kind of uh, the, this um, delta of the last 200 um, spaces. Who's going to decide that they're necessary? Is that simply up to the, some something in the TMP? I don't. I, you're losing me here on the, on whether or not those spaces are necessary. The community seems to think that it, they're still in play, um, and I don't think that I got that. Well, I'll, I'll take a shot at that real quick. Um, the, the plan is what it is in front of you. So it, it's, it's the 1,825 spaces. That's, that's what's being proposed. The idea is that if that is found to be insufficient when this site is in operation, so, so you're beginning to have issues with parking in the neighborhood or, or what have you, then there will be continued study in terms of what to do with that um, up to adding an additional 200 spaces on the site which the neighborhood and the community has offered to support at that time following additional study um, so so essentially what what's being voted on today is is the 1825 spaces with with the 200 spaces off let me just add to that. Um, if you, if there is a request for additional spaces past this approval, the applicant will have to come back with an amended master plan for this commission to review and approve. So, I mean, this this discussion between about the 200 parking spaces is really a discussion that had taken place between the community and the applicant. In the case of any um, traffic impacts, unforeseen traffic yeah. impacts in their neighborhood, but I also believe that what you're approving today is the cap. And if the applicant feels like they need to come back with more parking spaces, this commission will have to approve the incremental change at a later date. So, um, so it so it's the same 200 spaces that's in play as a bargaining chip for the 0.2 acres. I can't answer that. <laughs> no, could I get some clarification? I, yeah, I'm uh, not queen. I the, just want somebody to answer. No, the, the, the extra 200 spaces would not be in the forest. They would be on. They would be surface spaces. Uh, no, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking if the same 200 that are sort of up in the air the Delta, yeah. uh, are the same 200 that you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, the the, we, the way we got to the compromise was that um, the core said we need 200 more spaces and. And there won't be a traffic congestion problem if we include 200 spaces. And this was all sort of in the context of the garage. We in the community were worried that there would be a, a major traffic congestion problem if you added the two, if you had the extra 200 spaces. And we didn't think if you had a good traffic management plan and good incentives that you'd need the extra 200 spaces. And what we came to is that that was a factual issue. It could not be resolved. There was inherent uncertainty. And so the way to get to yes, the way to reach an agreement would be build the garage with 1,800, and if there comes a time in the future that you find that you need 200 spaces and that a well-designed traffic management plan was insufficient for getting those people to work, and if there was a showing that there would not be undue traffic congestion, then we'll go ahead and let you, uh, and you know, not complain about you putting in the spaces. So, their traffic will be monitored and the traffic plan will be monitored by this joint traffic committee over the next five years. And so we'll actually get the facts on which to, to make a rational decision. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Could thank the core representative yeah, respond I, to the I, I, commissioner's question about the feasibility of the uh, thank you. point two? If I, well, uh, I'd like to touch on about two or three. Sure, First of all, please my, name's, my name's Jim Manselman. Um, you've heard DIA reference. I'm actually the executive agent um, for the director of national intelligence on this project. Um, so does that mean you can also speak for him as to why no, because I said so? 
I, I can speak to that. Great. Yes, ma'am. Cool. Yes, ma'am. So we get a twofer. First, let, let me couple. Uh, first of all, let me t cover the easy one first. Uh, the metro stop or metro shelter. Um, be more than happy to include that in this project. Uh, I'm the one that actually runs the shuttle system for the Defense Intelligence Agency. Again, I'm executive agent here for the intelligence community, but our plan is to have the shuttle run that's already been discussed. Uh, we just completed a brand new shelter down at Bowling uh, on our base there, so I know what it takes uh, to do that. So that, that, is, that is an easy fix. Uh, the other thing I would say about the garage itself, and this is this is counterintuitive perhaps, um, the DO and I can't speak to all DoD, you know, facilities and and solve all the standoff issues there, uh, but what helps me bring the garage inside the secure perimeter uh, helps me to save the forest and the things that the neighbors are concerned about because I can bring the structure closest closer to those existing buildings. If I separate the garage outside the secure perimeter, then I have to extend the distance between the nearest building uh, and the garage to about 142 feet, which then pushes it out where we don't want it, and I know the community doesn't want it out there, and that's, th that's into the forest edge. Uh, so that's, that's why we were literally able to bring uh, that building off of that west side uh, forest, so it saved in that instance. And then the, ma'am, if I could have you restate just to make sure, because I want to make sure I'm answering your question about the traffic or the parking or the. Okay, well, I want to go back to the 142 feet though, because sure. I don't buy that completely. Um, it, it, if you were, are you saying that there, can we have a slide please? Sure. Um, I get that there are other ramifications of move up for, to the, um, to the, what did you call them, the mid-site and the northeast um, alternatives. But certainly there's 142 feet, just as an academic point, uh, setback, you know, uh, if you were to move, to go to the northeast solution. That certainly would you would have, that, you would that's, have plenty on that of. that condition, that's not our concern there. Our concern there is the I got garage it. That's, becomes yeah, right. I, I understand high. that, but I, I, I'm not. I, I remain unconvinced that this was a serious alternative that was looked at. I don't know why. We see this in other places too. And if you think about it logically, all of the apparatus that is required to screen employees inside their cars. Um, rather than parking their cars and then being just screened as, you know, bodies going into the facility, it just makes a whole lot of no sense to me. Um, and I'm not sure that we have made a convincing case that it ought to be seriously looked at, but I hope that we can do that um, because there are other ways to do it. Um, anyway. So the 142 feet then you're saying is that it, it was not necessarily um, unachievable with a location, but a, di a different location on the campus, but, the lo but, but that begets different problems. I'll lose the mic, but can I go to the point? Sure. It, what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying here is we're able to bring this. I, I know what you're saying. I, I got that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I'm just saying that the whole idea of putting the garage outside of the secured perimeter is certainly possible, not on, not on the yeah, north absolutely. east yes, side. Um, and were it to have been a seriously Somewhere considered else. option, we might yeah, have yeah. seen that Some, else. explored oh. more readily, I think. Oh, but I'm not going to argue with you about that. Um, I just want to mark it for the record because I'm yes, stubborn. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the other thing, what I'm asking about are, in your opinion, is this feasible? Can the, two, the 0 0.2 acre loss be reconciled with your programmatic need as defined for the garage? We, and, and I am the one that, in fact, I'm the one that said the less than one acre. Uh, and in our engagement with the community, what I wanted to, because I told them I could be run over by a bus tomorrow, 
I, I wanted to get this document and down the things that we agreed to so that that's the commitment letter in your package yeah the the reduced size garage the decision on that uh, we made probably two weeks ago roughly and I need to give the Corps of Engineers again the, they're the construction agent and design managers for the project the time to do the engineering design based on that shortened garage so what I did was I put in my commitment letter that we because I knew confidently and I don't I'm giving them a commitment, I want to stick to my word, that we would be less than an acre on the entire site. And so I, they're saying, I, I think what they're saying here today is that's not good enough. Yes. And so what I guess you, you're looking to us to sort of uh, adjudicate this difference. And we can't really do that if you're not saying you, we can't really put a condition on the approval or requirement if if you can't in, say that you can do it so i'm not sure how we we can proceed if it's an unknowable fact of reconciliation at this point my belief is that we can proceed or, or, or my request would be for the commission to approve the master plan we'll do the detailed engineering design which then comes back uh, to this uh, commission in a month or two i'm not exactly sure when then we'll have the detailed engineering that shows and and i've promised to the neighborhood that i would literally and i have walked the woods out there um, with them we can identify exactly uh, what we need what we can do what we can uh, absolutely save and can we keep to the point two but what i didn't want to do in my commitment letter is commit to a point two and not be able to achieve that uh, so I wanted to get it down to that precise engineering of what we can do design-wise. And with the master plan, plan approval, I can give the core direction, let's complete the engineering design on the solution. And, and that's okay. why I did what I did, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So I think to move this along, I will move the, the approval of the executive director's recommendation with the addition of the language suggested by our executive director that the um, 0.20 acre loss be a target as you look at the more detailed engineering and design uh, uh, that we're, that's going to come back to us in a couple months. So that would make that motion to approve the EDR with the addition of the uh, concept conceptual language offered by our executive director as an option that the, that the 0.2 acre uh, that they only the, that, that that be a target in the uh, as, as they as they do the more detailed engineering and design and so we can see if it is second, visible. second second thank you i'd like to offer a friendly amendment that we also include a target for stormwater reduction of, of the 25 versus the uh, um well i'm not 10. sure if that's the correct i mean certainly i'd be open to that i'm not sure that that doing it in that fashion is exactly the right one but i'm i'm happy enough with that Again, as a uh, target, and I would in, include it in the, uh, you know, I guess at the very last paragraph where we're encouraging them to take certain steps in terms of coordination and stormwater reduction, just so that we have something specific. That way, if the Corps manages to meet these objectives in their further analysis, um, it will be a fairly simple matter to get, go through the approvals. I'm fine with including that as part of my motion. I can't remember. Were you the second? I, I was not the second. Um, were you, are you comfortable with that? I, I second it. I don't know what exactly that. I, I was asked, I was offering that as a friendly amendment to the motion. Can I, I do was, that? I was accepting it if the seconder was comfortable with accepting it. We get back to the typical challenge of how do you get for a federal project to come in above standard? Where do you get the supplemental well, funding? One, do you? Well, one's a floor and one's a, a reach. Sir, I, I'm comfortable if, with that being a the target, and okay. we're going to give you the best design we can possibly give you. Subject to the results of the detail, detailed engineering analysis. Yes, sir. What's, uh, Cer certainly, I, I wouldn't think that the, the Corps of Engineers would want to build something that, that, it, mm -hmm. that uh, you know, allows damage to adjacent property when it could be avoided within the, you know, within the reach or within the, the uh, limits of the project. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tregrani? Do you want to add the bus station <laughs> condition? Um, I, I, I won't torture them any further with it, but I will, you know, when I'm looking at the map, which no one can see, but if that was to be expanded a little more, there's a um, 
there are like 400 surface parking spaces across the street at the Safeway Shopping Center. And if it was a structured garage there, yeah. no what? Uh, I believe that was discussed at our meeting in December and the owners of that shopping center are... Uninterested? More, more than uninterested. <laughs> I think we proposed to perhaps at least some surface parking and the response was... Not surface parking, but but a structured garage. I mean, I think most merchants would not hate it if you brought 3,000, 1,800 people a day, you know, to their establishment where they might be inclined to buy something. Um, you know, not surface parking, but if you're going to build a structured facility, you could build it across the street, and then it would be able to be used, you know, all times of the day and night. Not, you know, the picture I have has shows your facility entirely empty of cars, while their facility has cars in it, and I'm sure that there's a that there's a, a synergistic set of uses. We would call that shared parking in the city, and we would try to cluster different uses that use that same parking space several times during the day for different uses as opposed to each and every car you know getting uh, its own berth whenever that it might be used which results in nine parking spaces per car on average in the US you know so anyway just a, just a thought I don't I won't put it into a motion but I will just say this is a crazy parking solution <laughs> I think it's good for the commissioners for you and the commission to be on record encouraging shared and more creative parking solutions a few additional comments if i might the uh mr Solop mentioned something about incentivizing behavior uh the dod has a pretty good track record in the national capital region we have the largest mass transit benefit program eight times larger than the uh than the next nearest uh when we had uh, era money supplementing to up to 230 dollars a month the participation was over $70 million and benefits were distributed to more than 30,000 DOD personnel, more than half of the DOD personnel in the National Capital Region. It's gone down now since that uh, one-time benefit uh, expired. M multiple comp uh, complementary things I think have occurred. I um, appreciate Mr. Uh, Hinkle's uh, thorough presentation and the staff analysis uh, and correcting the comment earlier about a little bit of work has been done on the garages supplemented later by a tremendous amount of effort has occurred so I appreciate that. appreciate that with the public meetings and your personal intervention and yes, uh, walking the site and so forth so many accommodations no increase in the site no increase in population historic preservation elements are preserved decrease in surface parking uh, less deforestation uh, reduced by 70 percent over what was initially uh, proposed at our December meeting uh, preservation of usage, stormwater management, transportation and parking, community interaction, the letter of commitment uh, dated the 30th in response to the 22nd of January uh, uh, MOU from the Homeowners Association seeking lead silver for some of the projects and lead gold. And it just goes on and on. The function, uh, adjacency of the, the, the design to maintain some functional buildings, um, the multiple uh, variations on the garage improved security the visitor control center 25% um, reduction in uh, parking uh, off-site remediation I think uh, what I'm seeing is just an unprecedented level of collaboration and, uh, and cooperation uh, interactions and, uh, and mitigation um, the project between what we saw in December and what we see now is almost unrecognizable uh, there's been so much uh, dramatic improvement. I'm reminded of the gentleman that had a midlife crisis, so he went and uh, whatever it was. He went. He joined the gym. He lost 25 pounds. He got some cosmetic work. He went into Brooks Brothers. He bought a nice suit. He walked out and got hit by a bus. <laughs> and when he got to the pearly gates, St. Peter said, Excuse me, tell me again who you are. And he identified himself, and St. Peter said, Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry you weren't due yet. We didn't recognize you. So I think that's uh, the case here in this project, almost unrecognizable from the tremendous uh, I'm not gonna buy accommodation. A <laughs> <laughs> Any? One, one area of concern, the four-way stop at, is it Sangamore and Sentinel? Yes. Not only unsafe, um, in inefficient. Can you imagine trying to queue up a thousand or more employees getting onto the site saying, you go first, no, I go first. You clearly needs to be signalized. I have a traffic engineer, senior traffic engineer on my site, on, on my staff, and they said this is just a, a no-brainer. This needs to be a, a signalized intersection. Right. Jared and the Corps are working closely with the county traffic engineering Good. and 
keep it, keep it up. We're following their guidance. Further discussion from the Commission, Commissioner Dennis, this is your neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to, uh, I thought the punchline on that story was going to be that uh, St. Saint Peter said, I'm sorry you're here, but your shoe look great. <laughs> it's working out. Um, I can repeat that if you want for the record. <laughs> no, I, ju I just want to uh, commend the, the uh, stakeholders and staff for their, their willingness to seriously consider various proposals that have been put forward, uh, many of which have uh, substantially improved the project. Uh, I was not as surprised as some may have been at the significant uh, turnout by the community for the October meeting or what was virtually a Christmas Eve meeting, not only in numbers but in expertise as you've seen so well represented today. And uh, I look forward to uh, perhaps further uh, improvements uh, to be made. I, I think uh, certainly uh, it's been established uh, that there's a willingness to uh, consider ideas going forward and it's it's a very uh, it's been a very healthy exercise thank you anything further from the commission we have a motion uh, on the table all in favor say aye. Aye, aye all opposed the ayes have it thank you commission staff mr hinko for all your work on this and thank you for thank you to the community for all your work on this and to the core yeah, I, I would echo that, especially uh, since so many came forward today and testified in support of the Park Service's position. So, thank you. We move next to uh, if you, next to agenda item 5B, uh, the streetscape and site improvements at the uh, Lafayette building. Mr. Weil. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, good afternoon. This is a site improvement project at the Lafayette building. Uh, which is located at 811 uh, on Vermont Avenue in Northwest Washington, D.C. Uh, the project is uh, actually, the site improvement project is in conjunction with an ongoing uh, interior building renovation, uh, which is scheduled for completion in uh, 2016. Uh, the project is being submitted by the U.S. Uh, General Services Administration for preliminary and final site development plan review. So the site is uh, located along Vermont Avenue between Lafayette Square and McPherson Square uh, in the vicinity of the White House. Uh, as we zoom in closer, uh, you will notice the Lafayette building um, takes up a majority of the block, uh, also shared by the Shoreham uh, Hotel building. Uh, the block is bounded on the west by Vermont Avenue, uh, I Street and McPherson Square on the north, 15th Street on the east, and H Street to the south. Uh, the building is located directly across the street from the Veterans Administration headquarters, and the Lafayette building is a federal building uh, with office space for the Export-Import Bank uh, and also the Veterans Administration as well. Uh, two other notes, the Lafayette building is a National Historic Landmark, and it's located within the 15th Street Financial Historic District. So here are some uh, existing conditions views. Uh, this view is looking uh, southwest across the 15th Street, uh, I Street intersection. Uh, you will note in several of these photos, uh, there are construction fences uh, currently set up a part of the, the ongoing uh, internal modernization project. Uh, this is on the south side of the building, looking back across 8th Street uh, towards the VA headquarters building. And this shows the, the building's current front uh, entrance. And you will note that there are currently some temporary planters um, set up across the entrance area. These are views across uh, along each side of the building, uh, along the sidewalks. This is on the north side of the building, along I Street, uh, looking towards Vermont Avenue. Uh, we have H Street, uh, which is located along the south side of the building, looking towards 15th Street. Uh, this is 15th Street, looking north towards McPherson Square, located along the east side of the building. Uh, and here's Vermont Avenue, which is uh, where the front entrance uh, is located, looking towards uh, McPherson Square. So a little project background. Uh, the, the GSA submitted a plan for preliminary and final review, which was approved by the Commission in March uh, 2002, shortly after 9-11, which installed these uh, temporary planters across the front entryway. Um, the ongoing Phase 1 building modernization project, which is currently uh, going on at this point 
uh, was submitted for preliminary review by the Commission uh, in May 2006. As part of that submission, GSA had also submitted the site improvement, uh, a site improvement design. And these bullets show uh, the, the germane comments made by the position, uh, the Commission, excuse me, related to the, the, the site plan. Um, down here you will note there is a, a rendering from that design submission. And uh, one of the major elements from that design submission was uh, a, a perimeter um, security bollard line completely around the building. Uh, so the Commission's comments were to develop a design uh, a site improvement design consistent with the National Capital Urban Design and Security Plan uh, to coordinate the design with uh, the building retail tenants and downtown business improvement district and to um, make sure that uh, the applicant provides adequate e uh, information that will that would allow the Commission to fulfill our, our NEPA obligation. Um, the, the final uh, plan for the interior building modernization was approved in April 2007. Uh, and again, the Commission uh, just reiterated its, its request to uh, make sure that adequate uh, NEPA-related information was, was provided uh, for the site improvements. So here's the current design proposal. Uh, it includes a number of design features, and I'll go through each of those features briefly. Uh, number one, the, the current design proposal will uh, add uh, new and replacement trees to create a more substantive uh, streetscape um, uh, buffer between the, the property and the, and the street. Uh, the major um, uh, modification to the 15th Street side of the building is the secondary uh, row of trees, uh, honey locusts, to provide uh, a barrier, a visual separation between uh, in a, a gathering and, and seating area located adjacent to the building and the main um, through walkway part of the part of the sidewalk. Uh, the current uh, design submission uh, does not include uh, a physical perimeter security. Rather, it includes three low bollards uh, across the, the widened uh, wheelchair uh, ramp uh, leading to the entry uh, portion of the building. Uh, and these building, these bollards, these low bollards are really designed more to um, prevent errant vehicles and, and vehicles from mistakenly uh, driving up this widened um, uh, wheelchair ramp. The new design incl uh, includes uh, larger uh, tree boxes and also continual uh, five foot wide uh, tree trenches that are designed to, to meet LID uh, standards or low impact development standards. The new design incorporates new paving. Uh, majority of the site will be um, paved in using London pavers uh, with light granite uh, uh, borders uh, around the tree trenches, the enlarged uh, tree boxes, uh, as well as the reconstructed uh, 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 wheelchair ramps as well. And there will be um, uh, uh, black granite installed in front of the, the two building entrances. One, the main entrance along Vermont Avenue, and uh, a secondary building <coughs> entrance located at the 15th Street, I Street uh, intersection. Uh, the design proposal will in install <clears throat> excuse me, new street lamps that are consistent with the DDOT and the downtown bid streetscape standards, uh, new twin 20 lamps along Vermont Avenue, uh, single Washington Globes along the other three sides of the building, new street benches, and the new design proposal has designated three uh, areas uh, that would be um, set aside for vending areas. So here's uh, the illustrative plan that shows the existing trees along there. <coughs> and there are uh, several existing trees that, are, that were um, deemed uh, fairly healthy that will be preserved. Uh, and then this illustrative plan shows the, the, the new trees and replacement trees that will be added to create a more, um, more robust streetscape. So here are some existing and future um, uh, renderings of the, pro uh, of the project once it's completed. 
This shows the 15th Street side of the building, and you can note the, the new pavement, uh, the new Washington Globe street lamps, <clears throat> excuse me, and the secondary uh, row of honey locust trees. Here's a direct uh, on view of the 15th Street side of the building. Here is the, the here would be the new um, future condition of the front entryway. Uh, you will note that uh, the new Twin 20 street lamps, uh, four new oak trees to frame the, the, the uh, building's main entrance, as well as uh, a widened wheelchair ramp with the three uh, low uh, bollards. And here's an angled view of, of the front entry uh, area. <coughs> so staff reviewed the project uh, using the comprehensive plan for the national capital, as well as the national capital urban design security plan, objectives and policies, and found the project to be consistent with uh, both of those plans. Staff also uh, uh, ensured uh, an adequate review of the project uh, 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 in compliance with NEPA and the National Historic Preservation Act as well. So it is the executive director's recommendation of the commission to approve the pre preliminary and final site development plans for streetscape and site improvements <clears throat> at the Lafayette building and to commend the U.S. General Services Administration for its decision to forego permanent physical perimeter security at the Lafayette building in favor of a more environmentally sustainable streetscape design that improves the aesthetic quality and overall accessibility of surrounding public space and improves the settings of the historic Lafayette building and 15th Street uh, Financial Historic District. And that concludes my presentation. I'm now available to answer uh, any questions uh, from the commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weil, for that uh, great presentation. Um, and I would emphasize, <coughs> emphasize your commendation of GSA for getting rid of the, the bollard security line, the, the entire line of bollards. That's great. Any, quest any questions of Mr. Weil or discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, you mentioned McPherson Square. Yes. Does the continuing state of disrepair of McPherson Square adversely impact this project? Uh, that I that I can't speak to. Um, <clears throat> yes. I I think it's a matter of opinion, which might have to do with your well, let's you take, know, opinion yeah, well, of Occupy DC. Well, but, no, but I mean from I'm just our asking. Point of view, it's not we we go to a, we go to great lengths. <laughs> to have environmental accessibility and all the fine words that were used and the renderings that were shown. And I'm just asking, does that improve uh, the business district and the environment in that area? Is there any impact? If there's no impact, you can say that. If there is an impact, is it positive or negative or is it neutral? I didn't state an opinion. I, I, I just, I just, I just asked the question. I don't think it's a question that's germane to the review. That was my project. question. Is it germ Is is there any impact whatsoever of uh, the current state of McPherson Square? And and uh, you know, from my perspective, that's <coughs> excuse me, out of the scope of this project. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm not prepared to answer. Okay. But you mentioned McPherson Square. That's the only reason I, I raised the uh, yeah. question. Or perhaps another way to look at it, is there improvements along, was it the I Street side of that building? Uh, yes. But, but not of the square yes. itself, which would be? Correct. On site along the I Street side of the building. And I guess it would be inappropriate to <laughs> say, well, we expect all projects to do some off-site improvements like the previous project voluntarily committed to doing any any further any further questions or discussion Ms. mr Gani? oh sure was there a little sidewalk cafe action on one side of the building did i see that correctly there, there was what, yes. in, what's up with that in the future rendering <coughs> excuse me right there there we go all right well there's already something there yeah uh, right, right now. I mean, I mean, there's, there's a, unfortunately a, a construction wall right now. There used to be a deli um, there, and there was an entrance into the deli, right. and and the interior renovation will provide a, a new entrance into the building itself. This is the old Loeb's deli. Okay. The old Loeb's deli. 
And so are you <clears throat> do are you you're maintaining what was there more or less in terms of that's going to be a commercial use? Are you doing anything to restrict that? The the existing um, uh, I, I believe the 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 uh, interior renovation project will maintain uh, 7,200 square feet of the ground floor retail on that side of the building. Um, th this is a long-term um, phased uh, modernization. <coughs> Allison Dresser is the project manager from GSA. You want to speak to the retail, Allison? Um, just that uh, that area is planned to remain as retail uh, use uh, for uh, the the actual retail. Uh, that would be there in the future is not yet determined. But the same amount would be? Approximately, slightly less. There's a new second entrance that's taking up part of that uh, former retail space. That's what I was asking. The thing that's right at the corner, that's a new second entrance to the that, federal part of the building? That's right. That'll be an employee entrance. Holding the corner is kind of important for retail, but uh, OK. If, if, if the intent is to have as much active retail, you might, I don't know if these, these drawings are going to be used in the future, but you might want to alter the, the future one to at least have as much activity as the lower one, in the, which is the existing uh, retail activity. Just so it goes from four, three umbrellas to two, or? <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion or motion? Motion to approve the EDR. Any for any further any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, concludes the open session sure. agenda. If there's if I, no other if I may two two quick Mr. points Francis. one I think would be we would be remiss if we did not come in the executive director and staff for the new and approved revised streamlined format for the EDRs it retains all of the features that we have known to rely on and to, to love over the years but it's at a in a compressed streamlined table of contents is helpful that type of thing so I would join you in that uh, in combination Last point is, uh, at the Pentagon yesterday, uh, Dr. Arthur Rosenfeld spoke. He's a champion of cool roofs, and he's a sponsor from Lawrence Libert War Labs of, excuse me, Lawrence Berkeley Labs of this uh, GCCA, the Global Cool Cities Alliance that DC is not currently a member of, but we understand their executive director, Mr. Schickman, has reached out to the DC Office of Planning. I'd like to, if I could, uh, pass along some information to both the executive director and the chair to perhaps since the urban design task force is underway to consider some cool roof types of requirements in the future from the local standpoint we certainly consider changes. ourselves a global cool city <laughs> <laughs> thank you for bringing that to our attention any further business to come before the commission if not we are adjourned thank you Happy <laughs> six more weeks to order. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.